Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Cedric Nunn's Photo Talks, in which I speak uh, talk about an image I have made, including its content, context, and aspects of its making. And the image we are I'll be discussing today is one of um, my father and um, bedridden shortly before his death. So again, quite a poignant and uh, sorrowful even image. The caption reads, my father Herbert Nunn and his granddaughter Giovanna Perez Casanova. Uh, Mangueta, KwaZulu-Natal, 1996. And again, these um, this is the penultimate image in the opening essay on of my um, mid-career retrospective. And uh, and um, yeah, so we'll 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 be discussing this and then one more and then we'll move move on to um, some more uh, gen more general work from I think the next slot is is uh, Mozambique uh, a trip to Mozambique that I made that was quite significant at the time, but. Um, to return to this image, um, I um, it's, it belongs to a body of work called uh, Blood Relatives, and uh, it's perhaps one of the more intimate and more personal of the work that I did looking at my family and my extended family and community that I uh, family community that I, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of with a view to uh, unpacking identity. This image, um, uh, in a way uh, that, you know, sometimes people say a, a, a photograph speaks a thousand words. This does, but not in a way that you could easily uh, in, in, e extrapolate on, because you just wouldn't know so much about what's what that image is is about. Yeah, I mean, one might have a curiosity as to the name of his granddaughter, Giovanna Perez Casanova, and that's an obvious and easy answer. And that her father is uh, Chilean, um, and joined a whole lot of Chilean expatriates who left Chile after the disaster that befell that re region, uh, that country in particular, uh, where it was, um, where uh, Allende was couped, and Pinochet came in uh, and, and crashed the economy by test driving the neoliberal uh, economy that the first country to do so um, that came out of the Chicago uh, School of Neoliberal Economics. Um, so there's a big Chilean community in South Africa, and um, uh, it's been a joy to meet a lot of these people, exuberant, beautiful, wonderful people who are, came here largely as economic refugees. And uh, Jaime, uh, Jaime has, her father, has, has done well in South Africa, and um, we've been happy to have him as a family member as well, and his children are thriving in this country. But back to my father, um, you see him here um, in at the end of his life, literally. He's, he's ailing, he's ill, he is 79 years old, he will die in a year's time, and... Um, and so there's a lot of tragedy in this image. There's a lot of one what one expects as one arrives at the end of your life and um, has the time to reflect in the way that he did 
um, with his with his uh, his ailment, um, and I suppose it just comes with age, the the need to reflect on your life. And uh, there's a lot, so much I can say about it because, um, firstly, to say that um, my father was an absolutely beautiful man, uh, full of integrity, a sound moral compass, uh, who made great achievements in his life under the circumstances that he was subjected to. His father, his father's father, his grandfather, died when his father was probably three years old. When uh, uh, his, his, uh, my father's, like, let me just put it this way, my great-grandfather lost his, uh, his uh, land in the, uh, the Zulu Civil War. Uh, when it was ceded to the Boer Republics, the new Boer Republic. So my grandfather John was 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 three years old when that happened, and my dad uh, was uh, twelve years old when his father died of a heart attack. So my, you know, quite natural causes. And uh, so my father had to become a self-made man. Um, and he had to do so under, largely under the rigors of apartheid. And he bore a lot of pain and anger at the denied opportunities that, that, uh, that were denied to him through apartheid. Um, and I saw him in the final year of his life, the final years, let's say, managed to find uh, resolution, to find redemption, if you like, and find peace from the anger that he held, he held within him throughout his life about um, uh, the rigors that apartheid uh, placed. And there are many. People think it was just that you couldn't enter, you know... Um, white establishments or something like that. It was the denied economic opportunities that were the worst. And my father was a natural kind of businessman uh, who yearned for those kind of opportunities and they were few and far between. Uh, he couldn't walk into a bank and get a loan and do things like that, you know. He had to struggle to get a license to run a trading store on his own property. Uh, you know, through many, many years, um, through, um, through uh, you know, having to have uh, lawyers rep represent him. And um, he was an extraordinary example to us and to me in particular. And um, um, shortly before he died, uh, literally weeks before he died, he, I, I was priv privileged he, to, uh, in that he he, I guess, kind of forewarned me and uh, and told me that he was at peace. Uh, he accepted death as an inevitable part of life, that he'd had a long and fruitful life, and uh, that um, that um, he was he was now ready for this this natural phase of living which is death. And so this image, in a way, kind of um, reflects on that, that process of renewal. This young life lying next to him, who will go on, and who is him in a, at a cellular level. Uh, to continue living, even as his life comes to an end. So, in a way, uh, an image that is loaded with, uh, for me anyway, because I know uh, that much more about the man that he was, 
um, that that I am uh, eternally grateful for um, to have had as a father, um, as a leading light, one who um, I'm not sure without you know of course um, you know um, one will have. Um, uh, we are human. We will. My father was human as well, and so am I. But um, certainly, in retrospect, I look back and um, um, I'm thankful for a man who led a led a uh, who led a life, an exemplary life that um, that I could look up to and be guided by. And I and I'm thankful that I had the opportunity to express that to him in in while he was alive and to thank him for the person that he was um so yeah these um uh, on the surface the images you know it's it's quite straightforward it's um you know you just you it's you just you see what you see um but for the people who knew him, and I think it's always important to remember, you know, we tend to have moved on now in a way in South Africa. And uh, we, we, um, we, we don't think that we need to reflect on what that social experiment meant for so many of us. And, uh, and the legacy lives on in many ways, but also the legacy of rebirth is also with us and to be embraced and taken forward. So um, thank you for watching um, and uh, I'll end it here and uh, say more information on myself and my work can be found uh, on my website, a link to which, including my blog and email address, can be found in the video description below. If you like this talk, remember to click the like button and press subscribe. It helps the channel grow.